Stop, stop the music. Why is no one doing the top of the show thing? It's the Christmas episode, for God's sake. What? What do you mean we still don't have an announcer? I thought Doug came back when we offered to double his salary and promote his quinceanera DJ business. What do you mean we blew the show's budget on the search for Tim? Well, I mean, I think it was worth it. Did we not bring in any ad revenue? I spent that too, huh? Well, fine. I'll announce the show myself. It's the America, the podcast, War on Christmas Spectacular, Volume 5, The Search for Spock. But instead it's Tim, The Search for Tim. You get it, right? Right. Moving on. Starring me, Bebe Starred, the embodiment of an only hope for America. Featuring Mike Lindell and the Stolen Election Quartet. With special guests, the Beatles! Wait, what? Oh, we didn't book them. Did something happen? I just saw them write a new album on Disney Plus over Thanksgiving. Oh. A documentary of archived footage put together by Peter Jackson, you say? Ah, I see. Peter Jackson strikes again! You will rue the day, Peter, and only you know for what you shall rue! Anyways, so can we book them for a last-minute performance? Oh, well, when did they break up? Wow, how did I miss that? Oh, right, I was doing a lot of stuff for Nixon at that time. Well, what if we paid them to reunite? I have a dollar around here somewhere. Huh? Why not? Oh, Jesus Christ, that's terrible. So when and how did he die? Wow, was I really that tied up in getting Reagan elected? Jesus, the GOP took up a lot of my time in the past. Wait, George is dead too? Damn it, I need to read more. Wait, what am I saying? <laughs> no, I don't. I'm an American and inherently know everything. I guess the reason I didn't know about the Beatles was because they're subjects of the goddamn Crown of England. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. Queen Elizabeth is actually a friend. Yes, Liz and I always sit next to each other during the Illuminati's winter blood sacrifice. She has this joke about how, <laughs> about how, <laughs> about how peasants are gross and poor. Super funny. You really have to hear her tell it, though. Good times. Anyways, where was I? Ah, uh, yes. The War on Christmas Spectacular, featuring an assortment of Christmas characters that can't get my show sued. Now that that's out of the way, let's see what's happening to me. Pevidai is a star, the embodiment of an only hope for America. Whoa, there, there, Nathan. We're here. I owe you a debt of gratitude for taking me all the way to the gates of the North Pole. You may go now, and I will take it from here, my friend. <coughs> Take care of yourself, Nathan, and let the Dakota Elves know I appreciate all of their help. May the magic of Christmas be with you. <coughs> all right then, may this be the end of my search for Tim. Come on. Hello? Is anybody there? I demand you open this door! It is I, Thibodeus A. Stard, the embodiment of an only hope for America, and I am here to seek an audience with my friend Meredith Bipplewink. No one sees the Premier Elf without an appointment! Ugh, listen, Elf. My name is Colin! Colin Hanks! Tom Hanks' son? No! I'm an elf, you silly human! I also spell my name with two L's! Ah, well, Colin... With two L's! Yes, yes, Colin with two L's. Far too many oddly spelled names in this journey. I have traveled the world and need your help to find my producer, Tim. I implore you, let me speak with Meredith. That's Premier Bippowink to you. My God, I am getting nowhere. I should have never trusted those stoner elves at the Six Grandfathers. Wait, the Dakota elves are you? Well, that's a reindeer of a different color. Come in, come in. Indeed they did. I believe their name was Craiglin Dick something. Craiglin Dickery do? I believe so, yes. Why didn't you say so? He was my dentist before he left the pole. Get on in here. Yeah, if it wasn't for Craigland, I never would have started flossing. Right this way. Enter. Uh, Premier Bippowink? This human says he was sent by the Dakota elves so that we could help him find his friend. His name is... Well, 
well, well, if it isn't Thebidias A. Stard. It's wonderful to see you. How have you been? Hello, Mary. I've been better. How's communism treating you here at the Pole? Wonderfully. It's technically not the North Pole anymore, though. What do you mean? It's still colloquially known as the North Pole, but we're now officially recognized by the United Nations as the Elven Workers' Republic of the North Pole. Economy's running smoothly, toy production is up 60%, everyone has high-quality housing, candy and cookies on their tables, and a living smile magic wage. We even take the entire Elven population on a pilgrimage to the six grandfathers every year to see our brothers and sisters down at the Dakota farm. But enough about me, what brings you all the way up here? Well, at the end of the mid-season finale of my very important show, America the Podcast, my producer Tim went missing. What? What happened? We were using my storytelling ability to travel back in time to witness the signing of the Declaration of Independence and stayed so long we got stuck there. Kind of like when the holodeck fails on Star Trek and the crew gets stuck inside. You may go now, Colin. Ma'am? Your guardian elf is correct. We stayed to witness my transformation into the embodiment of an only hope for America. But when I wasn't able to get us back, Tim vanished. I'm not sure if he was Thanos blipped out of existence or just taken to some different realm of time and space, but I need to get him back. Without Tim, my show may not continue. I fear I may need some sort of Christmas miracle. I see. How can we help? Well, I'm at my wit's end. I've been everywhere from Philae, Egypt, to Dracula's castle, to Israel, and even to Mars. I was hoping Christmas magic might be able to bring him back or at least locate him. I haven't replenished my supply, and despite being American, I, I don't think I can do this alone. Do you possibly have any magic to spare or some sort of ancient technology here that can bring Tim back? Well, we don't have any sort of technology here that can help, but you're right. One person's Christmas magic won't be enough to get it done. Damn it! Then my search for Tim is truly ended. How will the world hear the important things I have to shout at them? This is... Indeed, the worst thing to ever happen to any person in all of history. Oh, calm down. White men are always so dramatic. Thank you. That wasn't a couplet. Never mind. As I was saying, no one person's Christmas magic could bring Tim back. But I think I have an idea. You don't mean... That's right. We gotta get the band back together through a Christmas montage. Well, this is a podcast. I don't think a montage will translate well. Not with that attitude. First stop, 19th century England. Yes? Hello, Scrooge. Fabadias, it's good to see you, my friend. Merry Christmas. Oh, thank Christmas. We arrived after the three ghosts this time. Listen, Scrooge, we need your help. My producer, Tim, has vanished. That's terrible. How can I be of assistance, Mr. Stodd? And, uh, Miss... Oh, it's Premier, actually. Premier Meredith Bipplewink of the Elven Workers' Republic. Interesting. I've never met an elf before. My apologies, Your Excellency. Now, how can I be of service, my friends? Well, since you had your experience with those three ghosts, you have Christmas magic that might help get my friend back. Mm, very well. Let me grab my coat. And it was actually four ghosts. Wait, how are you aware of the ghost that I saw? A uh, long story. Around 62 pages, in fact. Uh, okay, let's see. Well, that was easy. Uh, where to next, Mary? We gotta get Krampus. He'll have loads of Christmas magic. Where the hell are we? I thought the spell was cast to take us to Krampus. This looks like a hospital. There! The sign says, Munchner Zentrum für Virusforschung. In American, please. Munich Center for Viral Research. Why would Krampus be here? Remember? He helped develop the COVID-19 vaccine. We had a whole conversation about the RNA work he was doing last year after we saved Christmas. Ah, uh, yes. I offered him $100 million for the rights to it back in January. Alas, Krampus turned down the money and made the vaccine free to everyone. It's still free, in fact. A true attack on capitalism. I'll just double my offer when it's time for the COVID-24 vaccine. For now, let's go in. Hello, and welcome to the Munich Center for Viral Research. How can I help you? Oh boy, I think I know this person. Let me handle this. You sound familiar. 
You don't happen to have a brother by the name of Carolyn, do you? That's Carolyn with a B, sir. But yes, that's my twin brother who works at uh, a secret temple in Antarctica that I think the Illuminati runs, but I'm not supposed to talk about it with y'all unless you as Illuminati people or something. Well, Mary and I are both members, so your secret is safe with us, Miss, uh... Oh, how rude of me. I'm Richard. Richard with a Q. Of course it is. Do you know how that spelling works, Mary? I speak every language, and I can't make candy canes or gumdrops out of that. Right. Ugh, this name thing is getting out of hand. Colin with two L's, Jared Kushner the Elf, Carolyn with a B, now Rick with a Q. You got something to say about my twin brother, Carolyn with a B? No, it's just... Listen, sir, I don't make my brother teleport me from our studio apartment in Las Colinas, Texas, all the way to Antarctica, then jump through a weird, smelly portal all the way to Munich, Germany, every morning for work just to listen to y'all pick apart the names my mama Tiffany gave us. And I suppose Tiffany is spelled with a... With a seven, obviously. How can I help you? Ugh, very well. We are here to see, uh, Krampus. Dr. Christopher Krampus? Christopher, really? We're doing that? You got a problem with someone else's name? No, it's just a weird name for a monster. I feel like we got off on the wrong foot, which seems to be happening quite frequently. Is it me, or I, I just, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. Wait, is that him? Never mind. Good day, Richard, with- A Q! Jesus, Derek Christ, whatever. Indeed it is, Mary. Krampus! The Matthias, Meredith, Ebenezer. What brings you to Munich? Wait, is this about Tim Vanishing? Why, yes it is. Do you listen to my very important show? Of course. The mini episodes are kinda meh, but I never miss an episode. Yeah, those were Tim's idea. Speaking of, we need your Christmas magic to bring him back. Will you help us? Well, I was in the middle of developing a vaccine that could cure the common cold. The cure for the cold can wait. Please, Krampus, we need you. Tim needs you. Well, all right. Let me tell the other virologists that I'm leaving. Very good. How many more people do we need to get, Mary? Three or four more will do the trick, and then we should have enough Christmas magic. Then let's skip ahead if we can. How? Through the magic of capitalism. We can just go to commercial, and then we'll be back at my estate in Austin, Texas with all the other Christmas characters. All right, America. First, my apologies for just now acknowledging you. As you know, I have other things on my mind and forget I have this recorder strapped to my chest. Second, while we continue to get the Christmas band back together, I invite you to hear these ads so I can hear my bank account grow like the Grinch's heart. We'll be right back. This episode of America the Podcast is brought to you by Chinese Censorship. Just kidding, no it's not. America the Podcast doesn't bow to foreign censorship. Free the Muslim Uyghurs. Also, Taiwan's a country, and the Chinese government can eat a butt. Hi, America. It's me, Chet Sconson, CEO of The Real American Company, here with our annual Christmas message. Now, as you know, last year we apologized for installing a defective model of our product, The Real American President, and we tried to make it up for you by installing a newer model. Well, we seem to have messed up once again. Despite this newer model having served as a Real American Vice President for some time, and being perfectly capable of serving as the Real American President back in 2016, well, it seems this President has, uh, aged a little bit, and is no longer a viable model. Now, we thought we had you covered with this new model of the Real American Vice President that we installed alongside the new American President, we even forbade it from calling it spouse mother. However, it seems that this real American vice president picked up some bad habits from the former real American president and doesn't even read briefings. That said, we wanted to make it up to you, the American people, by installing a newer and improved model that we have in stock, but unfortunately, once a real American president and a real American vice president are installed, they usually have a four-year installation life. Because of those limitations, we can't install a new president until November 5th, 2024. But with that in mind, we wanted to give you, the American people, a chance to vote on which kind you'd like us to install. Now, we can't promise there'll be great models or even smart models, but there'll be a plethora of different models to choose from in 2024. Like our Florida governor model, the DeSantis, or our Republican Indian woman model like the Nikki Haley. 
or even our Democratic Indian woman model like the Kamala Harris. You can even choose our douchebag model known as the Gavin Newsom. And just for fun, we'll even throw in the two old defective models just to see what you guys do. You can't fault us for wanting to have a little fun here at The Real American Company, because that's what your politicians do. They have fun with your lives, and we just follow suit. And you can have some fun too once that 2024 election comes around. Maybe QAnon will even rear its ugly head again. So, from our family here at The Real American Company to yours sitting at home by your Christmas tree, we wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas and to tell you to get your vaccine. I know that has nothing to do with the rest of this commercial, but we care about you and want you to get your vaccine. So go get your vaccine. Do it now. Please, do it now. Please get your vaccine, or the Omicron variant might actually kill you. This has been Chet Sconson with The Real American Company, wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We'll see you in 2022. Get your goddamn vaccine. And we're back, America, at my estate in Austin, Texas, that is. And it appears we have everyone here, question mark. Uh, let's see, Premier Meredith Bippowink, Ebenezer Scrooge, uh, Dr. Christopher Krampus, Frosty the Snowman, whom Tim and I hung out with regularly outside of this podcast, uh, Jack Frost, and of course, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I'm not gonna lie, Meredith, our band is not what I thought it would be. What do you mean? Look what we have. Scrooge is an elderly real estate agent. Krampus is a monster turned virologist. Hey, I'm not a monster. I'm a demon. That doesn't make it better. Demons can help do good things too, you know. I help create the COVID vaccine. Oh, really? You haven't mentioned it a million times. What is COVID? Uh, let's not bicker. We have work to do. Where's Frosty? He has to stay outside because he keeps melting. Well, we're in Texas, and the AC can only go so low. Can't Jack Frost keep him cool? I'm 90% sure Jack's doing coke in the bathroom with Rudolph. That explains why his nose was extra red earlier. Honestly, I don't know how much magic Rudy actually has left. What do you mean? He retired 20 years ago to sell insurance after realizing how terrible Santa was. Aside from me and maybe that half-melted weirdo outside, well, I'm starting to have my doubts this will work. Well, we have to try. All right, everyone. Frosty, get in here. Jack, put the powder away and keep Frosty cold. I'm here, I'm here, just trying not to melt. All right, everyone take a hand and let's concentrate on bringing Tim back from where he is. We need all of the Christmas magic you can muster. Let's do this. Damn it, I thought this would work. Maybe it wasn't enough. Is there anyone else we could call? Maybe a non-Christmas character? What about the Easter Bunny? Oh, you didn't hear. He's in rehab after overdosing on fentanyl. The opioid epidemic claims another victim. Ugh, oh, damn it. Well, my thoughts and prayers are with him and his family. What about Father Time or Baby New Year? Eh, uh, Father Time died in 2008, and the current Baby New Year is scheduled to be the Antichrist, so... Ugh, is there anyone we could call? Well, there's one person I know we haven't tried. No, I won't do it. I don't like it either, Theb, but we may have to. No way, he hates me and tried to poison Tim a few years ago. I don't think we have any other option, Theb. You have to call him. You have to call Santa. All right, I called him and made a deal. He should be here shortly. Wait, what kind of deal? Ho, ho, ho. Hello, Nicholas. Thank you for coming. It's very brave of you to have me here, Thebatias, especially after you called the feds on me two years ago. Are you not afraid? Ta, not in the least. I'm an immortal, and also called in a favor to the U.S. military. Right now, there are 15 Navy snipers with guns on you. If you try and harm me, Meredith, or any other person here, your belly will be full of more than just milk and cookies. It'll, it'll be full of bullets. That's, that's what I meant. Bullets. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I thought you said we had a deal. We do. If you help us get Tim back, I will have your criminal record wiped clean. 
killing Jeffrey Epstein wasn't that evil as it is. But exploiting the elven workforce at the North Pole was... Uh, yes, about that, Meredith. I told him I would serve as a neutral party to discuss having him back at the Pole. Absolutely not! Listen, Mary, I had to give him something. You don't have to agree to take him back, just entertain the idea and I'll deal with him after. <sighs> okay, fine. All right, everyone, let's try this one more time. Santa, you may take the lead on this attempt. Very good. Everyone with me now, concentrate on Christmas. <laughs> Damn it, it didn't work. Are you even trying, Kringle? Don't blame me. I used every bit of power I could conjure up. He's full of shit. Probably didn't even try. He only cares about himself. Oh, fuck off, you commie elf. I should have sent you to the South Pole penal colony years ago. Joke's on you. We shut that down and freed the political prisoners you kept there. Oh, good. Because the world totally needs more Marxist elves. Quiet! This festive fighting is getting us nowhere. Is there anyone in the world or America that could help me? I believe I could be of assistance. Thomas, Thomas Payne! Payne. Payne. The one and only. Tom, it's been too long. What are you doing here? Well, I was listening to your show and heard Tim had vanished. You listened to my very important show? How? Oh, America the Podcast is the number one podcast in the afterlife. Everyone listens to it, even the other founding fathers. They... they do? They do indeed, my friend. Ben Franklin sends his regards. Oh, well, that is wonderful. So then I guess you heard season five, episode four, i.e. the episode on common sense. Indeed I did, and I wanted to apologize. I had no idea I was writing down what you were saying. I was in a bit of a writing trance that night at the pub. I hope you can forgive me for accidentally stealing your very important words, Thebedias. No worries at all. You stole my words, I purchased your bones on the black market and keep them in an old banker box beneath my desk. Water under the bridge. Wait, what? Water under the bridge. It's a metaphor or a turn of phrase or something. Not real sure. Anyways, you said you could help find Tim? I can! I thought I'd use my Christmas magic. Wait, how do you have Christmas magic? Oh, because common sense came out around Christmas. As did the American crisis. Huh. huh. I guess that I'm not that sure counts. that's right. I also helped my neighbor discover the true meaning of Christmas? Really? I thought you were famously non-religious. Listen, do you want my help or not? Absolutely. Do your thing, Mr. Payne. I, I'm sorry. Holy Heath Ledger's ghost, he's alive! Whoa, where am I? You did it, Thomas! Welcome home, Timothy. Wait, I'm home? I'm home! You got me out! Indeed, I did. <laughs> well, we all helped, but the credit goes to Thomas Payne. Thomas Payne! Oh, wow, it's great to meet you, Mr. Payne. Likewise, good sir. Damn, Feb, you got everyone to help. Hey, Mary, it's good to see you. Frosty, Jack, Rudolph. Krippus! And Scrooge, too! Oh, man. Oh, this is great. Ho, ho, ho! Oh, shit, Feb! It's Santa! Get down! Oh, my God! He killed him! Did I get him? What are you doing? I made a deal with Santa to help bring you back. But he tried to kill me the last time he was here. Also, he didn't technically help bring Tim back. That was all Thomas. Santa's deal was basically void. Oh, yeah. Good point. Where did you even get a gun, Timothy? Oh, right. Uh, when I disappeared, I ended up back in the void of time. Damn it! How did I not check there? Uh, well, were you okay whilst stuck in the void? Uh, it felt like I was in there for 50 years and five minutes at the same time. If someone had left the remote from the movie Click in the void of time, I probably would have gotten out. Oh, sorry about that. I'll make it up to you with a pizza. Frosty. Order Brooklyn Pie Company on one of the food apps. Anyways, you were saying about the gun. Well, when I realized where I was, I remembered you told me there were a ton of guns everywhere, and sure enough, I immediately tripped over one of hundreds of Smith & Wesson scattered on the ground. Serious lack of gun safety in the void of time. That Matrix staging area gun room is way more organized. Agreed. The old gods have really let the void go to shit. Right. Well, at any rate, I'm glad I grabbed a gun. That place is in 
infested with time bears. Time bears? Uh, that's what I call them, at least. Uh, terrifying, glowing, three-foot-tall bears that sing show tunes. The glowing part I understood, and the smallness added to, you know, the creepy factor. But uh, I'm not really sure why they sang. Oh, I know what you're talking about. They sing to lure people to their deaths. I can't actually remember what they're called. Ugh, they're called soul decapitators. He's alive! Of course I'm alive. The bullet only grazed me. This liberal snowflake couldn't shoot the ground if he was looking at it. It also helps being immortal. Indeed it does. Listen, everyone. I want to apologize. Seeing everyone come together to save a mediocre white man at Christmas. Hey. I mean. Yeah, all right. Gave me a new outlook on life and has filled me with the Christmas spirit. I lost it for years, making millions of dollars in toys, giving in to greed to make even more money, going to lavish Coke-fueled toy executive parties. It got to the point where the Coke was the only snow I ever saw. But tonight has changed me. Meredith? Yes, Santa? I know I don't deserve to come back to the North Pole, and frankly, I don't expect you to let me come back. I'll admit, through communism, you've done amazing things with North Pole operations. I routinely find myself both jealous and proud of the work you're doing. That said, if you can find it in your heart to have me back, I would love to come help. I don't know if I can trust you. What would you even want to do? Well, to be honest, I miss making toys. Maybe I could start on the toy line while on my journey to build back the trust I broke. Hmm, what does everyone else think? Scrooge? 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 God bless us, everyone. Yes, yes, right. Ah, he fell asleep. Then I guess let's start with Thomas Paine. If his heart is true, then why not forgive? What about you, my furry friend? I vote forgiveness, as long as his red little bottom gets a good spanking. Krampus, yes. he's talked about Jesus. this. This Krampus? is why I Gross. hate working with you. What about you, Frosty? I'm dying. Yes, but what is your vote? I vote for whatever gets me back in the snow. <coughs> well, that's a yes from Rudolph, I think. Anybody seen Jack Frost? I think he's doing push-ups into his pile of cocaine in the other room. We should probably take him to that rehab center the Easter Bunny's at when we're done here. Good call. Well, then that just leaves you two. Why us? We're not Christmas characters. Maybe not, but you both have still somehow found your way into the inner workings of Christmas the past few years. Plus, like you said, Santa tried to kill you. So if any two humans deserve a vote, well... While it may seem un-American of me, it is Christmas, so I vote forgiveness. Timothy? I mean, uh, listen, ever since you tried to kill us in the War on Christmas Volume 3, I jump whenever I hear sleigh bells. Mall Santas even freak me out. I am terribly sorry for the stress I caused. Truthfully, I only tried to poison you since you knew I'd killed Jeffrey Epstein. Well, yeah, murder isn't great, but it was Epstein. And I guess if the elves forgive you, then so can I. Hooray! Santa's back! Thank you, everyone. I can't wait to make toys again. Ho, ho, ho! Well, Timothy, another Christmas adventure on the books. Yeah, I wish I could have been more a part of it, though. Well, maybe next year. For now, Christmas will continue like it has for eons now that Santa is back at the North Pole. Which reminds me, I was a little shocked you gave him a pass for killing Jeffrey Epstein. Well, yeah, it would have been great to get info out of that son of a bitch before he died, but he was a fucking monster. Good riddance. Yes, but you do remember that Santa killed Jeffrey Epstein to cover up the crimes of the rich and powerful, right? Oh my god, that's right. Fuck! Yep. What do we do? Well, I guess we hope Santa doesn't kill again and that him working his way back into the North Pole isn't part of some larger plan to take back control of the now stable Elven Workers' Republic of the North Pole, the first truly stable and prosperous communist government in history. Jesus Christ, what have we done? Oh, I feel sick. Well, just keep waving to the audience and you'll be fine. This is a podcast. The audience can't see us. Well, then just keep waving at the fireplace and slowly drift into insanity. As for our listeners, good night and good fight and Merry Christmas, America! Ho, ho, ho! A 
America the Podcast is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Wait, it's not? Well, then who are all these people? They work here? Then why are none of them getting me a hot chocolate full of bourbon? Ugh, what, what do I even pay you people for? Do I pay you? I don't. Okay, well then, I'm not crediting you. All right, where was I? Ah, oh, yes. America the Podcast is produced and distributed by Shway Media and is part of the Shway Media Podcast Network. The show was created by Tim Philippi and is hosted by me, Hebe Stard, the embodiment of an only hope for America. The show is recorded in Shway Media Studios and is mixed and edited by Tim Philippi. Producers for America the Podcast are Tim Philippi and Alana Matos. The show's theme song is by Timmy Two-Step, and all other music and sounds heard in the show were procured through Storyblocks.com, Freesound.org, and AmbientMixer.com. A full list of credits is in the description of this episode. If you liked the show, and you better have liked it, please leave a five-star review in iTunes. The show is available on all podcast directories and YouTube, but the all-powerful iTunes controls the fate of podcasts, much how Santa will one day take back control of the Elven Workers' Republic of the North Pole. For video segments, follow at America the Podcast on TikTok and Instagram. And don't forget to check out all other spectacular Shway Media shows on the Shway Media Podcast Network at shwaymedia.com. Did I say your name enough, you podcast label shrills? See you in February 2022, America, for the continuation of America the Podcast presents the American Revolution from my very important perspective. Good night and good fight to those good people who decided to listen to the credits. You were true American heroes. This has been a production of Shway Media, all rights reserved. For more information, please visit shwaymedia.com.